Hey, you eleven. Okay, hey Ant, great to see you, dude. Thanks for coming. Look at that, first in the room. Boom, just like that. Outstanding. I'll get the register up and running, which is great. Hey, Elijah. Hey, MJ. Great to see you. Uh, are you guys missing me? I miss you guys. Miss our lessons. Miss setting fire to Anch. So sad. Okay, we've got Elijah. We've got MJ. Got a look. Look at this. Everyone's turning up now. Cool. I've got Min Wee. Have I got Tom? I haven't seen Tom yet. Got Anch. Have I got Meryl? No Meryl yet. Have I got Harry? Harry's in the room. Harry's in the room. Aisha? Aisha's in the room. Hibber? Have we got Hibs? Where's Hibs? No Hibs yet. Any Sian? Marella? I've got Marella, haven't I? Yeah, I saw Marella. Isha? Nope, not yet. Julian's in the room. Marcellus, I've seen, I think. Yeah, there's Marcellus. Love it. MJ's in the room. Kevin? There's Isha and Meryl making an appearance. I love it. Isha and Meryl are in the house. Love it. Still missing Tom. Has anyone seen Audrey by any chance? I know that she's always having internet trouble. I've got Ira, winner. Russell, maybe. Any Russell in there? Yo, Russell, come on, where are you? Emily? Eliz, I've seen Michael. Anyone seen Michael? I feel like I haven't seen Michael in a while. Guys, thank you so much for filling in the data. Uh, that I asked you to do. You're doing great. It's really nice for me to see that the data is slowly coming in, and I really do appreciate it. Just makes it a little bit easier for me to just to make sure that you guys are doing all right and I'm tracking you. That's all. I'm just trying to find it now, my year 11 tracker. Where did I do it? I lost it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um... I don't know where I would have put it. I haven't got a clue. It's gone. Oh. You, where's my year 11 track again? Um, there's Catherine and Michael and Tom. Yeah, we're in. Has anyone seen Cian? Where's Cian? I can't find it anyway. But anyway. Um, 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 I Sam's. There we go. Uh, Catherine's in the house. Emily? Has anyone seen Emily? No Emily yet. Sian is on her way. Sheesh. On way, on way. Michael's in the house. What about Emily? Tom's in the house. Has anyone seen Audrey? There's Sian. Sian's in the house. Has anyone seen Hibba? Econs. She's coming. Okay. Fab. All right, noise. So I've got Econs over running. God. <laughs> I've managed to lose my year 11 tracker. That's really annoying. Year 11 data. Where's my year 11? Year 11 data. Year 11 data. Do I actually type in year 11? Year 11 data? What have we gone and done? Damn paper. No, it's year 12. Uh, I don't want some of them. Oh, no. I just made a sheet. Where would I be able to find that, guys? I've lost it. I've lost it. Oh no. There's Emily. Hi, Emily. Hey, Hibber. Winner. There we go. I'll start the lesson now, folks. Don't worry. I'm not going to uh, faff around trying to find this. I might get. I'll, I'll, I can always find out who I shared it with last. Way over there. Got a full house. Guys, you want to see my t shirt today? Two moles per litre. I'm sorry. I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry. There we go. There we go. Two moles per litre. Awesomeness. I know, right? I've got Dr. Zarkov again. I don't know who Dr. Zarkov is. But you're more than welcome to join my lessons. Right. Okay, folks. So we have been, we are part way through. We are halfway through. I think it's the, uh, the June 2016 paper two. Yeah, that's where we're up to. Let's keep going. Let's go back down to where we're up to. So the nice thing is I think this will probably be a short one because I think we've covered most of it, but and the paper twos are relatively short. I was in your year 10 class either, uh, I was in your year 10 class earlier, did you notice? Ah, no I didn't, Sian. I didn't notice at all. How did I miss that? Don't know how I missed that. Right, so we ended 
Uh, we ended doing electron configurations. Uh, oh, don't be sad. I was so... You didn't post on the chat, did you? Oof. Uh. All right. Lithium hydroxide and lithium peroxide have been used in spacecraft to remove carbon dioxide that astronauts breathe out. I love that. What a great thing this is. Totally true, by the way. Um, uh, very, a very interesting uh, thing is anyone, if, you, if you've ever seen, ever seen the, if you've never seen the film Apollo 13, watch Apollo 13. Such, and by the way, the, the, the top one is most commonly used, I believe. Yeah, uh, but watch Apollo 13, the film. It's an amazing film. I can't spell Apollo. Is Apollo, no, no, that's not right. That doesn't look right. How do you spell Apollo? It's like that, isn't it? Apollo 13, there you go. Um, who's Didney? I can't remember who Didney is. You guys have funny names. Who's Didney? Oh dear, who's Didney? Is Didney Russell or Audrey? Uh, we're looking at your camera, you know. Oh, no. Sorry. Oops. I, I, you should, You would have thought I would have been a... You can't spell effervescence. Yes, I can. You, uh, we're looking at your forehead. Uh, yeah, Russell. It's Russell. Okay. Okay. Share screen. Sorry, folks. Not doing very well in this lesson. It's because I literally rolled from one to another. You have nice lights, Mr. Duncan. Thanks, thanks very much. I, mean, I do shine. <laughs> Hide. There we go, folks. Um, so yeah, this is the June 2016 paper, paper two. Um, Russell's in the house, right? I need to just make sure I've ticked Russell in on the... Russell's in. Has anyone seen Audrey? Otherwise, the lateral marker is missing. I haven't seen her yet. It's lights. Ooh, that proper delay on that. I'm going to put no for that. That way, otherwise, they'll shout at me. There we go. Uh, you guys, yep, yeah, that's all right. It's all running now. There you go, folks. So uh, do, honestly, on, honestly, that is an amazing movie. And it's actually the 50th anniversary, I believe. Um, and it's such a great movie. And it has some great chemistry in it. And it includes this one. Because um, they use, carbon dioxide is a big problem in space. We breathe it out. And you've got to try and remove it. Um, yeah, honestly, an amazing film. Tom Hanks, one of my favorites of all time. Great movie. Explain with reference to these equations, two advantages of using lithium peroxide rather than lithium hydroxide. Oh, that's interesting. So that's, they're saying that this one is better. Yeah. So looking at the equation, the first thing is we would agree that the quantities, this is all about the ratio, folks. So we need two moles of lithium hydroxide to, remol, to remove, to remove. <laughs> uh, is it on Netflix? I have no idea. No idea, Joe. <laughs> Um, so we've got, the, the mole ratio is here is what we're using. So we've got two moles of lithium hydroxide reacting with one of carbon dioxide. Well, if we use lithium peroxide, it's a two to two ratio. What that means is for the same moles, I will remove twice as much carbon dioxide by using lithium peroxide. That's really handy. So, um, number one, same same moles, same moles of lithium peroxide. Ooh, 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 sorry, Li2O2. Um, lithium peroxide as lithium hydroxide will remove, will remove two, twice as much carbon dioxide. Yeah, twice as much, as much CO2. So... Just to also then let you know, well, they, they do want us to put this in a, in a setting where they're saying using the equations. Now, I know I've highlighted it up here, but I haven't put it in my answer. So I want to translate that down there. I'm going to put, yeah, so I, I will put lithium hydroxide to CO2 ratio. Yeah, I'm going to put one to one. Yeah, uh, lithium, sorry, uh, lithium hydroxide is a two to one. Yeah, and then the lithium peroxide I've done that again. Such a habit. Uh, to carbon dioxide is a two to two, which is the same as a one to one. Yeah, is a two to two. That's what that's going to be the mark there, folks. Yeah. The next thing is there is a second benefit of the second equation, isn't there? I mean, guys, we're in space. What do you need to live in space? You need oxygen. So the second equation 
is going to provide you with breathable oxygen. Now, that's super handy. You could argue that the top one produces water, but it's in, just to let you know that actually it's not really drinkable. The reason why is because you're forming lithium carbonate and it would be trapped inside it because it's a liquid. The liquid here, because that state symbol's appearing here, quite nice to see state symbols. Um, the state symbol there being liquid is what causes us the trouble. Yet that liquid would be trapped inside the solid carbon, lithium carbonate that's formed. Whereas this, the oxygen comes out as a gas. So that bubbles out. So it actually is super handy. The second one is that lithium peroxide, lithium peroxide equation shows oxygen gas being produced, O2 gas being produced. Yeah. Oxygen gas being produced. That's super handy. Guys, you've got to go to space. You need air to breathe. Uh, and and they, they take up most of the... Can I just point out, by the way, I'm pretty sure they don't use that. I don't think they do. Or I might be wrong. I might be thinking of old chemistry now, and maybe this is... Maybe this is has a, you know, replaced lithium hydroxide. But from my knowledge... They use the top one. The reason being is it's not going to be particularly easy to try and catch that oxygen gas. It's not going to be easy that. It's going to be mixed with a bit of the carbon dioxide. And I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up. Interesting. Next one. Calculate the mass of lithium hydroxide needed to remove 100 grams. That's interesting that they drop back to lithium hydroxide instead of lithium peroxide. Let's write the equation down again since I've moved it out the way. Plus CO2 goes to lithium carbonate and water. Oh, I've done that, made a mistake there. Oops, sorry about that. Lithium carbonate and water. Make sure we balance it. We need two lithiums, one carbon, that, that then adds up, and I think that all adds up, doesn't it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, it does. I just thought I'd check up with the top equation as well. Two, one, one, one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so they have calculated the mass of lithium hydroxide. You've got 100 grams of carbon dioxide. Right, guys, nice, easy, basic calculation. Step one, get two moles, yeah? Number of moles equals grams over rams. Right, let's input my data, folks. So therefore, 100 grams of carbon dioxide. What does CO2, it's not rams, of course, it's rums in this case. What does CO2 weigh? Carbon is 12 plus oxygen 16 times two. It weighs 44. In my number, I'm now going to put 44 in there. So 100 divided by 44 gives me 2.27 moles, three sig fig. Next, step number two, use the ratio. Yeah, what is the ratio between CO2 and lithium hydroxide? The ratio is a two to one, and I'm going in that direction. That's what I'm going to write down. Right, so what am I going to do to this number? I want to double it, yeah? I want to get to that, so I'm going to times that there number by two. I've kept it on my calculator. Times by two gives me 4.55 moles of lithium hydroxide, L-I-O-H. Right, amazing. Now, last step. Step number three, get out of moles, yeah? So we've got to reorganize this because it wanted mass, yeah? Uh, you realize that the circles make it super awkward to see anything. I should be highlighting mass. Yeah, needed to react with 100 grams of CO2. That's what I should be doing. Makes it a bit easier. Right, now, so number of moles equals grams over rams. I always reorganize. I only learn one equation. Number of moles times by rams gives me grams. So I'm going to take 4.55 multiplied by what does lithium hydroxide weigh? Lithium is 7. Oxygen is 16, hydrogen is 1. 7 plus 16 plus 1. So I'm going to have times by 24 gives me 4.55 times 24, and I get a mass of 109.2 grams. There we go. My answer is going to be 109 grams, really, isn't it? Oh, there you go. They even gave us the uh, relative formula mass. It's formula mass because it's ionic. But what a great question. Love that. The answer is going to be 109 grams, by the way. Probably. <laughs> Next, what a great question. Calculate the volume of carbon dioxide at room temperature and pressure that can be removed by 100 grams of lithium. Lithium per, oh, 
Guys, they've switched. That's so mean. Lithium peroxide plus CO2 goes to lithium carbonate and oxygen. Yeah, balance the equation. Two lithiums, two lithiums. Uh, oxygen's four, five. Uh, it, that was a two to two. And then I'm going to need two of those. Yeah, to get the car, and then I think the oxygens. Then how many oxygens have I got? I've got four. That means that's four and four, so eight in total. That gets that. There you go. Finished. So there's my equation. I, I know that it's up there already. So they have given me one hundred grams of lithium peroxide, and they want um, calculate the volume of carbon dioxide removed. So they want that guy. Right. Step number one. Get to moles. It's always the same step, folks. Get to moles. Number of moles is grams over rams. Right, well, I've got 100 grams of it, of lithium peroxide. It's nice to circle it. Yeah, 100 grams of lithium peroxide, and they've been super nice and given me its MR. Why, thank you. Thank you very much. So that's going to give me 100 over 46. That becomes 2.17 to 3 sig fig moles of lithium peroxide. Right, we know that the ratio, we're gonna write down the ratio, it's one of the most lost marks in the whole of chemistry. Can I borrow someone's calculator? <laughs> yeah, this is a lot of calculator work stuff, you do need those. Yeah, yeah, sure, love it. So the ratio is a two to two. One of the most lost marks in GCSE and A-level chemistry, that folks. What that means is the moles is the same, yeah? So step two is use the ratio, yeah? And we've done that, we've written it down, we get that mark. So step three, get out of moles, out of moles. Now they're asking us, so we've got, so moles of CO2 is 2.17. Yes, agreed? Right, we now want the volume of the carbon dioxide. Number of moles is V over 24. Reorganize, I've got moles, I've got 24. Reorganize, yeah. So we've got number of moles times 24 gives me volume in dm cubed. Oh, it's a trap. It's a trap, folks. It needs to be over 24,000 because it wants me in centimeters cubed. Yeah, gives me V. So 2.17 multiplied by 24,000 gives me 52,174 centimeters cubed. Wowza, 52 liters, 152 liters. How big, how big is 52 liters? And considering like the quantity of carbon dioxide we breathe up, that's a really good amount. God, do you know what? It'd be really fascinating to look. You could calculate, oh, I'm going nerdy. Sorry, I won't do it. I'll move on guys, sorry. I was gonna go super nerdy and be like, you could calculate the amount of carbon dioxide that a person puts out by using respiration and the quantity of sugar and calories that we burn. You can work out the amount of glucose that you need. Therefore, you can work out the moles of, of glucose that we're actually consuming in respiration per hour. Therefore, you can calculate the volume of carbon dioxide produced per hour per person. You could assume the number of people on the space station. Therefore, you can work out the total volume of carbon dioxide that's being produced per hour. And then you can work out the quantity of lithium peroxide or lithium hydroxide that will be needed per hour to remove their carbon dioxide. How amazing would that be? Oh, sorry. I just went like I could do that. I could take that. Sorry, I'm sorry. I've got I've gone off gone off tangent. My bad. This question is about the laboratory preparation of salts. A student writes this plan for preparation of a hydrated magnesium sulfate crystal. Pour about one hundred centimeters cubed of dilute nitric acid into a beaker. That's interesting. They use the word about. That's weird. Um, did someone just put Google? <laughs> oh, you could just Google it. <laughs> Evelyn, that's brilliant. I do all that crazy maths and you go, Google? Um, they said about, that's weird. Um, add a solution of, mang uh, of magnesium carbonate. Add a solution, question mark. It's weird as well. Until there is no more effervescence. Cool, I love the fact that they use that word. Heat the solution until all the water is boiled off. That's a bad idea. No, no. It's gonna spit like crazy. Yeah, you wouldn't do that because of spitting. 
Um, the plan will not succeed because there is one mistake in each step. Oh, okay. Um, right. Identify the mistake in each step. Pour about, okay, of dilute nitric acid into a beaker. In each step. Identify the mistake in each step. Pour about. So hang on a minute. He wanted to prepare a sample of hydrated magnesium sulfate. The mistake is not the quantity. The mistake is the acid. Step one, wrong acid used. Yeah, he has been asked to produce a sulfate crystal. A su shouldn't use that, way too dark. Wowza, really dark. Let's make it lighter, yeah. He's been asked to produce a sulfate crystal and he's using nitric acid. Eh, eh, our survey said, wrong answer, should have been sulfuric. Yeah, uh, wrong acid used should have used, should have used sulfuric, sulfuric acid, acid, it's, it's French for acid. Um, number two, add a solution of magnesium carbonate. Magnesium carbonate, I don't think it's soluble. Um, oh, ah, you can't, right guys, really, really clever. Um, that's tricky. Add a solution. It, the answer is you can't use a solution. Yeah, because you, you, you can't. You, magnesium carbonate is insoluble. Yeah, magnesium carbonate. Magnesium carbonate, not soluble. Uh, people are going to say, how do you know that? Uh, it's tricky. So do you remember our solubility rules? Not soluble. Sorry, I can't not finish the sentence. Um, do you remember our solubility rules? We used Castro Bear, Castro Bear, and we used PMS. Yeah. And these are all of the group, but magnesium, it's only partially soluble. It's not even in your, your solubility rules. That's really mean. Yeah, Castro Bear is just, that's just a way of remembering that all of these guys as their sulfates, their sulfates, carbonates are insoluble. They're hydroxides too. Uh, no, that, that's not true actually, I tell a lie. Sulfates and carbonates are not soluble. And then we use PMS, yeah, which is lead. PMS is lead, mercury, and then silver. Yeah, and these are the chlorides, and these are the carbonates, the sulfates, and and the hal the uh, halos as well, the halogens, uh, chlorides, bromides, and iodides. Yeah, uh, but that's really mean, folks, because it's not there. Emailed me about calculated prices. Oh my god, that's amazing. Oh, that's so funny. Um, magnesium carbonate is not soluble. A solution of magnesium carbon it, to the acid until there is no more effervescence. Yeah, it's not a solution. Magnesium carbonate, not soluble. So solid would need to be added. Solid would need to be added. Not a solution. Yeah, not solution. Really hard, that. Stupid hard. That's at Excel's infinite. That's level nine, folks. Yeah, love nine. That's really hard. Very few people. Uh, please do not let me know as po please do let me know as soon as possible. He's trying to sell you a calculator. That's amazing. Heat the solution until all the water boils off. You never, ever, ever. Last one. Uh, never boil. Uh, boiling. Uh, boiling all water away. Boiling all water away is wrong. Is wrong. Yeah. You you can't do that, folks. It'll you'll it'll spit everywhere. It's very dangerous. Yeah, you, you do it until 80% of the water's gone, and then you, and to get the hydrated, you wouldn't even do that. You'd do it, you'd, you'd warm it to make a concentrated solution, uh, and then you'd, yeah, evaporate maybe 60% of the water and then leave it to uh, cool down in a drying of, in a, in a warm oven, leave it, leave it to cool down. Yeah, so crystals form and then filter. Next, another student uses the following plan to prepare a sample of ammonium hydrogen phosphate formed in the reaction between aqueous ammonium and dilute sulfur, uh, phosphoric acid. Okay, it's an aqueous one, yeah. Um, use pipette to transfer 25 of phosphoric acid, okay. 
add three drops of indicator. Use a burette to add ammonia until the indicator changes color permanently. Okay. Oh, okay, so they're just kind of doing, sure, but what was your budget? <laughs> anyway, uh, guys, usual reading of a burette. Yeah, so don't forget, yeah, after is over here and before. Yeah, it's always a trap. We know this trap, folks, and we know it well. So the after reading is dead on that line. Now, remember, on a burette, we do something very, we read it top down. So that is 23 point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And everyone's gonna lose the mark for that. Remember, uh, don't forget to add your second decimal place. Yeah, the zero. Next one, top down again. So that's two point, and then we get one, ah, okay. So that's 2.15. Uh, volume of ammonia added is just the bigger one minus the smaller. Yeah, 23.80 minus 2.15 and I get an answer of 21.65. Nice and easy, folks. Next, in another titration, the student made a mistake. After he filled the burette, he noticed that the space between the tap and the burette and the tip contained air. After adding the aqueous ammonia, he mo noticed that the, it can now contain liquid. Explain how, if at all, the mistake affects the calculation of the volume. That's very true. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Um, so guys, let's just imagine this. Let's draw this out. I've done a stupidly big burette. Yeah. Let's imagine we fill the burette up and let's say it reads 50. Yeah. But he, what he said is that there's an air bubble. We've got our tap here. Yeah. There's our tap. He said that they have an air bubble trapped here. Agreed. Now, when they opened the tap, yeah, when they opened the tap, the liquid fell through the liquid dropped to fill that gap the air is pushed out yeah so the so and then so this is the thing so the first of all the level is going to drop this is the this was the air gap yeah so the volume drops due to the air bubble first and then they then of course add the liquid now to the beaker yeah, so what will appear, what will happen is it will appear, so explain how two marks, so the volume, the volume added, doesn't look like I've written volume very well, the volume added appears, uh, the volume added appears larger, appears larger than expected. Larger than, oh, don't know what happened to my pen there. That was weird. The volume appears larger than expected. Yeah, and then we need to explain why. <laughs> due to, due to liquid in burette, liquid in burette, moving down to fill air gap, full stop. That'll get you both marks. Next, oh, calculate the volume of it. Oh, okay, the mistake affects the calculation of the volume of the you added. Yeah, it appears larger, yeah. Next, right, which ones are gonna be in? I don't know who Joe Lopez is either, but hi, Joe, thanks for coming along to my lesson. It's very entertaining. Um, so, we're looking for, now guys, they usually, there it is. They've told us which ones are going to be in concordance within point two. Too big. So those two are now in concordance. Too big. Two. Identify the two and tick them. Calculate the mean volume, 26.45. I said 4.5 and wrote 6.5. Plus 20, I've, I've written something completely different. 26.45 plus 26.25 divided by two, nice and easy. Um, and the answer is 26.35. So 26.35 is my answer. Still don't like doing that, even without a calculator. I just don't like doing it. Don't like doing it. Next, the student then makes the volumes of aqueous and phosphorus I can found in the titration. Describe how, how to use the method of crystallization to obtain a pure dry sample of salt from the mixture, Joe Exotic. Uh, that's Omar. 
Is that who it is? That's funny. Oh, you guys crack me up. Right. Pure dry sample of salt from the mixture. Well, first thing is, is we need to check something here, folks. That's actually quite clever. They're making you go all the way back. It's an aqueous salt. So it's not an insoluble one, which means you're going to have to then run it as a soluble. Yeah. Okay. I think this is the last question. So number one, now they've already said, describe how to use the method of crystallization. The student then mixed the volumes of aqueous ammonia and phosphoric acid found in the type. They've already mixed it. Yeah. So now that they've mixed it, they've already done that. So they've taken their two solutions. Yeah. Ammonia, ammonia and phosphoric acid, 3PO4, and they have mixed them together. Now what they've done, now, now we're going to have just salt and water. So now we're going to heat the mixture, heat mixture until, until 80% of water, 80% of water, until 80% of water has evaporated. 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 Next. Using glass rod, this one I always add now, using glass rod, check if crystals, if crystals form. This is checking for saturation, by the way, if you're, uh, um, if, you're if you're wondering. Check if crystals form. Next, leave, leave a solution to cool down. Leave solution to cool. So crystals form, so crystals form, filter crystals, filter out crystals, dry with paper towel. Uh, you can't rinse them. I do like rinse with appropriate solvent, that purifies, appropriate solvent. Uh, the example being ethanol, can't use water, it'll wash it away, yeah, and then dry with paper towel, dry in drying oven if you like, dry with paper towel, and we're done, what a long answer for three marks, I just don't trust it folks, there you go, guys, we're done, wow, another paper finished, that's amazing, another paper done, hey guys, how cool is that? Another paper two done. That means, guys, we're moving on to the next one. Yeah? So that was June 16. <laughs> um, that was June 16. I, I think we're going to be, we've done 15, 16. I guess we'll, we'll move on to 17. Seems like a good idea. Just to check, uh, I'm going to share my screen with you guys again, just to show you. I'm then going to find my data. I've lost my data. Um, I can't believe I've lost my data. I'll track it down in a minute. Um, just to quickly show you where I get them from. Uh, save my exams. <coughs> Chemistry. Uh, not the CIE. Uh, past papers, IGCSE. So we've got CIE. We want Edexcel 1 to 9. Past papers, Chemistry. There we go. So we've done 15, 16 now, folks, and we, we did the regional for both. That means, that, by the way, they're also therefore non-regional, but there is a similarity between them, so I won't bother with that. I'm now going to do June 2017 regional. I'll start that next webinar. And I want to see if I can find your data. Uh, do you know what? I'll find it in a minute. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave you be. Uh, can I ask you to please start work on the June 17 paper, paper one. Next lesson, I will begin the webinar to go through it. Guys, I'll see you very soon. Take care, guys. Have a good rest of your day.